Hi everyone. Sorry that I'm not there again, but I hope you don't mind uh, going through these videos with me. Again, I'm going to be doing the experiment right here, um, and then hopefully you in class will have some materials that you can also do it along with me. So for today, we're going to fin be finishing up Module 3, and we are going to be doing Experiment 3.3, .3, The Effect a Burning Candle Has on Air. So you'll want to open your student notebook to page 431, and this is also in your student textbook on page 68. Um, but if you have the notebook, you can just open it right there. Now the purpose of this experiment is to identify what happens to air when a candle burns. And the things that we're going to use in this experiment is a medium glass container, like a glass, a tea light, matches, a ceramic glass or a ceramic glass or metal high plate. Have that here. Food coloring. Food coloring. I'll use purple. A measuring cup of water. So there's the measuring cup and amp water. A stirring spoon paper towel, a small lump of clay, so I have some Play-Doh here, and a medium height candle that can fit in a medium glass container with room for a flame. So this candle will fit inside there. So that's what we need. And I'm also going to recommend another material for this is an extra glass of water. So after we strike our match and light our candle, we can drop it into that glass of water. If there are any changes made to those materials from what, what was listed, you should mark them here so we know we made any changes. Next, we're going to read this question. So the question is, what happens to the air inside the glass when the candle burns? All right, and we're going to write down our hypothesis. So we're going to write what you think will happen to the air while the candle is burning and once the flame goes out. All right, so you're going to think about that. Just think about what you know about candles and things and write in, pause this video for a minute. Everyone should write in a sentence or two to answer that question in this hypothesis box. All right. So now we're going to move on to, to the procedure. There's two parts in this experiment. So part one, place the tea light candle in the center of the pie plate. All right, we're going to look at it from this angle in the hopes that we'll be able to see things well this way. So next we're going to add a few drops of food coloring to the water in the measuring cup and stir so that it is well mixed. So here's our measuring cup. I'm just going to put some water in. Put in our food coloring and stir. There we go. Now when we're done stirring that in, we're going to use our paper towel, put this down so that we're not messing up our table. Now we're going to carefully pour water into the pie plate so it surrounds the candle. You only want a thin layer of water, so don't pour too much. So we're just going to pour a little just so that it's Totally surrounds the candle. It is a thin layer. There we go. Good. The candle's right in the middle there. Next, we're going to light the candle and place the glass container over it. And before I do that, I'm going to read this next part. We're going to allow the flame to burn until it goes out. 
We want to observe what the water does while the candle is burning and also what happens once the flame goes out. All right, so we're going to take our matches. We're going to light our candle. And then we are going to put the cup over it. And we are going to watch what happens until the flame goes out. Flame just went out. I don't know if you can see this, but it seems like some of the water has come up onto into the glass a little bit above where it originally was. So the water was here, and now it's here inside the glass. And kind of as we're watching, it's actually sucking water up into the glass even more as we sit here and watch. That's pretty cool. So we're going to, and, and now the tea light's now going to float on top of the water. So that's kind of cool too. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our student notebook and we're going to record our observation. So here on page 432, there is this data table 3.3, the procedure step number six. Record your observations of what the water does while the candle is burning and also what happens once the flame goes out. So right here next to that step, what we just observed. All right, so now we're going to take that off and we're going to clean this all up. So it says, dump the water that is in the pie, pie plate into a sink and dry the plate with a paper towel. So we're going to want to pause this video. We want to go to the bathroom, dump out the water, and wipe it dry, and then come back. All right, so now we're going to do part two of this experiment. So for that, it says, we're going to take a small lump of clay and place it in the center of the pie plate. So here is taking some of this, putting it there. It says stick the top handle into the clay so that it is firmly adhered to it and will stand on its own. Add more clay if needed. Put that, making sure it feels secure. Carefully pour more colored water into the pie plate like you did in step three. So again, we're going to just have, we're going to just have a thin layer of water. So we're going to light the candle. And this time it tells us to pay close attention to how long it takes for the flame to go out. So we're going to just count Mississippis, okay? there. Make sure we're not putting this down on, on anything that it could burn. And then we're going to put this on. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi. So it took about seven seconds for that flame to go out that time. As you can see, we also have the water coming up into the glass like it did in our last example as well. So now we're going to record our observations. We're going to record how long it took for the flame to burn out and include any other observations. So it took seven seconds or however many you counted when you did this yourself. And the water again came up into the glass. So now we're going to turn the page and we are going to write what happened, the results. So we're going to write what happened to the water as each candle burned. And then we're also going to write our conclusion. Write why the water entered the glass once the flame went out and why it did not enter as high with the taller candle. 
All right, so you're gonna wanna make those conclusions, make those observations. So pause this video and take some time to fill those out. So I wanted to take a little time to talk about your homework for this week. So you're gonna finish up reading module three. Um, and then you are going to have a lab report due next Monday. I should be there next Monday. So plan to look for the orange milk crate. You can put your lab, your lab book in, or your, um, your lab report, either the whole book, or you can make a copy or you can tear it out, however you want to do it, um, in that orange crate, hopefully during first or second hour. Um, and then that, that's what's going to be due. So what you're going to fill out is this form on page 434, and you can use any of the three labs that we worked on this week or last week. So last week we had the, the lab with the, the floating egg where we added the salt to the water to uh, look at density and, and how much salt it took for the egg to float. And we also did the other candle experiment where we had the different glasses of different sizes. Or you can do the one we just did today. Um, and so you'll want to fill out this lab report and hand it in. I wanted to give you a little bit more input on what I'm looking for for your lab reports. I got a chance to grade some of yours that, that um, got them to me last week. Um, and I just wanted to give you some feedback as a class so that we all are on the same page for what I'm expecting. So on your lab report form, what I'm using to grade these is actually in your notebook or just earlier in the book, in the front of the, your student notebook on page seven is where it actually gives the grading rubric. That means it's what I'm using to grade you. So to get full points on your introduction, so this first part here, to get full points on introduction, it needs to include sentences that fully explain why the lab is being done as well as clearly states your hypothesis. So you have to give a hypothesis in here if you want full points in your introduction. And then for your materials and procedures, you wanna list all the materials should be listed in sentence form if possible. It's okay if you bullet them out too, but sentence form is preferred. And the procedures performed should be clearly, neatly, and legibly explained in a few sentences. So your procedure should definitely be more in like a paragraph form or sentence form. So that's for your materials and procedures section. Then for the next part, which is your data and results, sorry, here on page 435, you want to make sure that your results are completely shown in table graph or chart, which are properly and clearly labeled. So if the data can be shown in a chart or graph, you should be creating a chart or graph to show here. We learned a lot about charts and graphs in this module. So, you know, when you're putting in the tablespoons of, of salt, you should have a, a graph, or I'm sorry, a chart <laughs> showing what task you did, how much salt, and what happened in it. And then, you sh your units should be included, so always put teaspoons if that's the one you're doing. And any observation should be neatly and clearly recorded. So here's a great place to draw a picture of what you've observed. Um, it's, that's a good place for that. And then lastly, for conclusions, your conclusion should be complete, logical, and very neat. Connections to the text are made, but you don't have to put a bunch of detail in it. And then um, any data or drawings, graphs, or references are used throughout the conclusion to support your conclusion, to support your statement. So you, you should have all of those things in your lab report in order to get full points. All right. And so as we do more and more of these lab reports, I'm going to get a little more picky every time just so that we are refining it as we go. So you guys have been doing great so far on the ones I've seen. But just remember that, that those are the things I'm looking for. And if you're ever uncertain what it is I'm looking for for these lab reports, it is 
here in the grading rubric on pages 7 and 8 of your student notebook. So no, you can look there. And I have one thing more for you for class. I actually found two videos that I'd like you guys to watch if you have time. Um, they're here on YouTube. One's about variables and one's about um, graphs and charts and making data into graphs and charts. And so these are two things that you read about in your module and that I hope these videos can just help um, improve your understanding, especially if you're taking the test um, for this module. There will be things on there about variables and about um, graphing data. So I have linked them below in the description and I've also sent them via email to your subs. So hopefully between those two methods you'll be able to watch um, these two videos and have a great rest of your week.